Hello, I want to focus this video on reactions of nitriles. Uh, so we started to see nitriles before the break, um, and I want to make sure that we're all on the same page in terms of what we can do with nitriles. It's a very versatile functional group. Um, and then give you a preview of reaction that we'll see uh, in a week or so uh, when we start talking about reactions of carboxylic acid derivatives. Right. So again, a nitrile, just as a reminder, is a C triple bond N. Uh, sometimes they're referred to as a cyanide. Um, and these molecules, depending on the reaction conditions we use, will enable us to make a carboxylic acid. Uh, and again, this is the one that we haven't seen yet, and this will come up when we do reactions of carboxylic acid derivatives, right? So this is uh, a preview, right? And that's a reaction that we will see in the future. Um, these two are reactions that we saw just before the break, and I want to make sure we're clear on those Write out the mechanism, um, make sure there's no confusion on what's going on. Uh, so we're treating our nitrile, C triple bond N. Again, it's a carbon attached to an electronegative element with a pi bond, in this case two pi bonds. Uh, and so it's going to behave similarly to a carbonyl. Right? So we have our strong hydride nucleophile or one of our strong carbon nucleophiles, and we can add those to make a new carbon hydrogen bond or a new carbon carbon bond. And if we use lithium aluminum hydride, we're able to make an amine, all right, which is a really useful molecule for us. So again, remember in your reaction notebook or reaction lists that this is a really useful way to make an amine from a nitrile with lithium aluminum hydride. Or we can make a ketone, which is a really valuable reaction for us. Uh, ketones we use for all sorts of things, and it's neat to know we can take a nitrile with one of our strong carbon nucleophiles, either organolithium or Grignard, and we can make it into a ketone. Uh, so what I want to make sure is we're clear on the mechanism for these reactions um, because, again, these are things we need to know. Uh, I'll go through the reaction with lithium aluminum hydride, and again, similar to the reactions of carboxylic acids and amides with lithium aluminum hydride, I think it's important to know that we can write out a mechanism. It's a little bit confusing, and it's not something that we would ask you to reproduce on a quiz or an exam, uh, but I think this reaction of Grignard or lithium is something that we should be able to do uh, if that was something that came up on a quiz or an exam. So let's write through the, the lithium aluminum hydride reaction first, and then we'll move on uh, to the one with the Grignard reagent. So again, we'll start with our, our starting nitrile with lithium aluminum hydride. Um, and again, we're going to add our nucleophilic hydride to the electrophilic carbon. Again, just like we, we always do. So that will give us a negative charge on the nitrogen. Um, and like we saw in the reaction of carboxylic acids and amides with lithium aluminum hydride, the negative charge on, in that case, the oxygen, but in this case, the nitrogen, will react with the neutral aluminum, which is a Lewis acid. It's an electron pair acceptor. And so that will give us something that looks like that. Um, and again, remember, aluminum, like boron, is always reactive. Uh, if it's neutral, like here, it doesn't have an octet, so it wants more electrons. If it has an octet, it's negative, so it wants to get rid of electrons, so it's always reactive. Right? And again, here, we can have a hydride delivered so that now we get our second carbon-hydrogen bond formed. And that puts a negative charge back on the nitrogen. Aluminum is now neutral. Um, and, and that's where it's going to sit until we add the acid quench. So with the acid quench, we'll protonate the nitrogen. And we need to break the nitrogen-aluminum bond, and there's several ways that you could imagine doing this. Um, I'll just give you one way that this might happen. Uh, nitrogen has a lone pair. It's in acid, so we can protonate it again.
So now the nitrogen is positively charged. Um, we have plenty of water in our acid quench solution. And so one way to imagine what happens to break that nitrogen aluminum bond is that water can add to the aluminum and then you can have the neutral nitrogen leave. Um, and so we're going to end up making oxygen aluminum bonds. Again, so that's something that we're going to wash away in the aqueous workup, but that enables us to get to our amine product. All right. And again, the thing to remember when we're doing this is where do the H's come from? All right. And I think that's a really important point when we're doing any of these reactions, right? To remember that those two H's are from lithium aluminum hydride and that those two H's are from the acid quench. Okay, so that's the mechanism for lithium aluminum hydride uh, to make an amine. Now let's do the mechanism to go uh, to make the ketone. All right, so I'm going to erase, and then we'll do the second mechanism. And again, this can be an organolithium or a Grignard. It doesn't matter. Uh, both of them will react. I just picked uh, ethyl lithium. So again, we're going to react our nucleophilic carbon. Uh, and again, if you prefer to write that as an ionic, ionic compound with the lone pair on carbon, lithium is positive, that's fine. Uh, whatever is your preference. So that's going to give us... that intermediate. And again, if you like to write lithium as the positive counterion, that's fine. Often I'll just leave it off. Uh, it's a spectator ion. It doesn't influence the reaction. Uh, but we've made our new carbon-carbon bond, right? So that's the key thing. Um, once we get here, unlike the reaction we just did with lithium hydride, this is stable. We're not going to react again, right? So uh, there is no second CC bond formation. All right, so this is stable until the acid quench. Okay, so we just make that one carbon carbon bond, that intermediate sits around, um, and then we add the acid quench. Okay, and so that's going to give us a neutral molecule. And this is an imine. We're going to talk a lot more about imines in the coming days. Uh, imines are, are useful functional groups that we make by adding uh, amines to ketones. Uh, but as we've been talking uh, in some of the other videos and in class, um, imines are things that are not stable and they can be in equilibrium with a ketone uh, and so what we're able to do here and what happens is this is not stable when you're under acid quench conditions right so this is unstable in acid and water which is what an acid quench is and so under those conditions the equilibrium is going to favor formation of the ketone all right so uh, these conditions favor um, ketone formation. And again, remember, this is one of those equilibrium reactions, right, where this is reversible, right? So let me just write that. It's a reversible equilibrium. And if we add water, adding water is going to favor formation of the ketone. Right. So what happens? Um, let me go over here because we have a little bit more space. So once we form the imine, we 
We can protonate it again. Again, amines are good bases. All right, and that forms an aminium ion. All right, aminium ions are key intermediates when we're thinking about reactions of ketones with amines and the backward reaction, which this one is. All right, so we form an aminium ion. That aminium ion is a very good electrophile, and water can act as the nucleophile. That gives us a tetrahedral intermediate. We can do a proton transfer. So just moving a proton from one electronegative atom to another. So proton can shift from oxygen to nitrogen. So now the nitrogen is positive. That means it can leave as something that's neutral. So we can form the carbonyl that we know is in the product. Uh, ammonia can leave. And ammonia is a good base. That can grab the proton and give us our neutral product. So we get ammonium plus our ketone product. Okay, um, so this is the mechanism to get there. And again, the first step is the step that we're comfortable with, adding the strong nucleophile um, to make the carbon-carbon bond. Uh, and then the second part, where we go from the imine to the ketone, this is a really good preview of what we're going to be talking about uh, when we add oxygen and nitrogen nucleophiles to carbonyls. And the interesting thing you'll see is that the mechanism we're going to write uh, is going to be the reverse of this, how to get from a ketone to an imine. Um, and the interesting thing is when you take water away, you can have it favor the imine. When you put water in, you favor the ketone, which is an example of how this is a reversible reaction. And again, we'll talk more about that. Right? And the final thing I would say, so those are the mechanisms to make the amine and the ketone and we'll see later on the mechanism to get to the carboxylic acid.